Good people of the SMT Nation, I've got a video for you here today. Uh, came across the 5G Plus icon while I was working out lifting weights, and I was very shocked. Uh, the gym that I work out at is a retrofit gym, meaning it's a it's a building that stretches, I don't know, probably like four or five businesses long. So it's like got this parking lot, and then all the businesses are in this island in the middle. And the building's pretty you know, built pretty well. It's, it's brick. Uh, the walls have a lot of metal and there's a few windows in the front of the entrance and that's really it. Uh, there is a garage door, but it remains closed and it's got, you know, this building has all types of metallic lining. Anyways, this is a very, very challenging place for cellular signals. The tower site for T-Mobile is probably just over a mile away. Uh, I get barely usable speed on N71, just enough to, you know, just have the occasional buffer depending on where I'm standing within the building. Verizon is very similar, only low band reaches. It's more consistent. I don't get buffering video or anything. AT&T previously actually was the best of the, the three. I don't know for whatever reason, but the serving cell must be a little bit closer possibly. Or the band 14 just has a better, you know, ability to get into the building. So I, I frequently use AT&T whenever I go into the gym and I got my iPhone 13 pro and you'll see that just on this day out of nowhere, seemingly 7 PM, I picked up the 5g plus icon. This indicates N 77 C band guys. I cannot tell you how shocked I was to see this because I know where this tower site is. And I would say driving it's about two miles away. Direct line, you know, so if like where you're standing at the gym to the actual site, it might be a little bit less. Like it might be, you know, one and three quarters mile or something like that. But I could tell you guys, this is no small feat. This is an incredible and I, I must say a very encouraging sign. I think this is an indication that this N77 C band stuff is very, very legitimately going to serve as the true 5G Goldilocks spectrum. And the reason I say that is this stuff is starting to impress me, not just in speed. It does offer really, really nice speed, but really what it's about is about the fact that it's working indoors as a, it's a macro band. This is not what CBRS is. This is not a, a, a band that's going to have trouble and difficulty getting indoors. It does in some very precarious situations like this one. Um, now it was not, performing well indoors but the fact that i was getting the signal is encouraging considering the site just came on air in fact the site has been on air but it is only now starting to actually work inside the gym in fact i wasn't even getting it in the parking lot before so with some tuning and i think also with the densification process of getting more neighboring sites with the upgrades this is what a lot of us are going to start seeing at&t is working at a blistering pace in cleveland it is very impressive they're actually working faster than Verizon. They're having to overcome less obstacles. They're having less difficulties with the upgrades. A lot of their sites have been more recently modified and upgraded. So like the transport, the backhaul, a lot of the other LT stuff has already been done. So they're just essentially going up to these tower sites and adding, you know, the C-band gear. So radio antenna, boom, they're gone. Uh, and they're just optimizing and it's all set in about a week. Uh, Verizon, meanwhile, neglected a lot of sites for a long time. The upgrades are more intensive and intrusive and more time consuming. It's taken them weeks often. All right. So guys, it is picking it up indeed. And I'm so encouraged. This is 40 megahertz of N77, 3.7 gigahertz C band. And uh, we're, we're picking it up in the gym. Here's a speed test from within the gym. Look, don't get me wrong. There's nothing impressive about the numbers, the raw scores, right? 45 millisecond ping, very average. 14 millisecond jitter, very average. 95 down, two megabits up. Nothing special about those scores. You would argue, oh, that uplink is terrible, right? And the there's nothing that LTE couldn't do. But here's the thing, guys. I'm looking at the situation. The, the story has been from some narratives being spun by certain people that this stuff is going to require double the tower density that uh, N41 has or needs. And that's just simply not true. I'm, I can't get N41 from a shorter distance into this gym, but I can get the AT&T from further away, the 5G plus. 
Now, that could be a number of things. It could be the gear. It could be the tuning. It could be power levels. I don't know. I'm just calling a spade a spade. This tower site is probably 1.75 miles away. The T-Mobile site's probably about one and a half miles away. And that doesn't even get there, right? And this gets inside. So I'm, I'm celebrating the fact that this stuff is really good, right? So there's the indoor speed test. You will see 5G+. Plus. There's your scores. And then here's the test in the parking lot. The ping is the same. 46 millisecond jitter, 11. All right, again, nothing special about those numbers. Not even great. 184 down and 11 up. And we're at distance, right? So it worked indoors. It's working outdoors. A lot of the things that, you know, some people have opinions on this stuff. And it's just not the case. This Just so for your reference, the Cleveland market is a Nokia market for AT&T. Some places they use Ericsson. Those are their two vendors for their gear. I don't. I, I think they might have a partnership agreement or something with Samsung. Maybe it's for small cells. Maybe it's for millimeter wave. I have no idea. I don't see Samsung gear for them. I do see that from Verizon. T-Mobile uses Nokia here. I just think the gear that AT&T is putting up is better than what T-Mobile is putting up. And that would explain why a lot of times I'm seeing that the AT&T 5G Plus seems to work a little bit better for range and coverage. Now, the T-Mobile N41 is faster, and that's because they have much deeper spectrum in those channels, right? The N41 channel is 100 megahertz here, and uh, they also aggregate some LT with it, so it's much faster. Typically, the N41 sites are about 500, 600 megabits per second routinely. Even on a bad day, it's like 300, 400. The AT&T 5G Plus, I'm getting speeds of around 300 to 400 average. Some of the more more optimized sites, I'd say, are like four or five hundred. In fact, um, one of the sites I've tested recently was like six twenty, which is a great speed test. That's the one that's over by the airport. I've got video coverage on it, but I just want to show you guys there is a lot to be excited for with AT and T's N seventy seven five G plus build, Verizon's five G ultra wideband build with this type of spectrum with this sp- uh, particular frequency the 3.7 uh, N77. And of course, they're getting pushed by T-Mobile, who's leading the way in, in their mid-band build, right? They're forcing the issue. They're way out ahead. They started first. They got that 5G stimulus with the merger, and they've taken advantage of that opportunity, and they've built a massive 5G UC network in comparison to their competition, who are essentially just starting. So they're out ahead, and they're going to continue to put their pedal to the metal and try to excel beyond their competition, and these guys are trying to catch up. And it's manifesting itself in my market, and I love it. It's been incredible to watch these companies upgrade their networks at a blistering pace, and I've enjoyed it every step of the way. It's to my benefit. I'm happy to have these carriers building out these networks so uh, quickly and rapidly here, and it's been an enjoyable ride. I wish a lot of you could kind of share that same experience in your markets, but CapEx is a thing, and some markets get the love from certain carriers, and other markets get love from other carriers, and I guess... You know, you talk with your wallet. If you want to have the best networking experience, you go with the most reliable, you go with the most capacitive and and where you are on a regional level. And, um, you know, the way that AT&T is really building out this network, guys and gals, I'm really starting to contemplate switching my main line from Verizon to AT&T. And the reason I'm thinking about that is because, A, I could save money. Uh, I have the fiber. I can do the wireless 25% off. I'm eligible for another discount, you know. um, and for my occupation and other things. Uh, but the networking, it, it's they're impressing me. I have to call a spade a spade. They're incredible. They don't have the millimeter wave that Verizon does here, uh, but it's something I can look past because of the uniform capacity that they've created. And the reliability has improved a lot over the last several years. And I'm not trying to throw any asperges on T-Mobile, uh, but AT&T and Verizon both have backup power on all their sites. They have I don't drop calls on them. So until that day comes, you know, I'm going to keep T-Mobile in the bullpen, you know, but I do use them all and they all have their strengths and they all have their weaknesses. And this is where I'm at in the CLE market. And this is what I'm seeing. And it's awesome. Uh, What do you guys think of the testing? What do you guys think of the scenarios, kind of the conditions and where I tested and the outcome? Uh, What impressed you? What isn't impressive? What are you seeing in your market? Sound off in the comment section below. You all the voice of the people, the SMT Nation, let your voice be heard. 
Like, share, subscribe for more, and turn on that bell notifications icon to never miss an upload. Links in the description for my Patreon page. Support us. Get early access to content and exclusive videos not found anywhere else. Also, my Twitter handle and my Twitter link is there in the description. And all business inquiries can go to the Gmail address in the description as well. Thanks for watching. See you all in the next video.